Jeff Bezos uh, has chosen the 27th anniversary of the date he founded Amazon in his garage to hand over the reins to Andy Jassy, uh, the, uh, one of the world's wealthiest publicly traded companies worth $1.7 trillion. Jeff Bezos, the richest man now on the planet, who uh, will remain chairman of the board. Brian Quinn has more. I think it is Jeff Bezos has stepped down as the CEO of Amazon exactly 27 years after founding it from his garage. But what kind of future is there for the company without its visionary at the helm? Amazon's success has earned it a heavy amount of scrutiny, and its next chapter could be even more embattled than the last. Bezos's replacement, Angie Jassy, built the company's massively successful cloud computing business. He'll have to steer Amazon through a number of hearings. In the U.S., the Federal Trade Commission has already launched an investigation, while in Brussels, lawmakers are needling Amazon with antitrust probes, accusing it of quashing competition from its own marketplace sellers. Amazon is also targeted by legislation. The U.S. government is proposing five different bills that would curb the power of all tech giants. The company would be affected also by global plans for a minimum corporate tax rate. Amazon is battling a growing push for unionization on the home front as well, with U.S. labor giant the Teamsters declaring Amazon its top national priority. For Jassy, then, it's a loaded promotion. He won't just have to lead the company, he'll also have to manage how it's perceived in a society that's increasingly hostile to big tech. And Bezos' shadow will continue to loom over the company. He's staying on as executive chair and will still be involved in crucial decisions. Well, for more, let's go to New York City. Avasiv is the principal of the consulting firm Quantum uh, Media, also adjunct professor at uh, Columbia University's Business School and Columbia School of Journalism. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Sure, Francois, no problem. Uh, your reaction to what we heard in that report, it uh, might be a bit of a poisoned gift uh, handing over the reins of Amazon at this point in history. Well, I, I don't think it's a poison gift. I think it's actually a really good uh, strategic move by uh, by Bezos, and certainly the uh, the CEO was pretty much the new CEO was pretty much warned that this was what was going to happen. So this is not a big surprise. They currently chose a day of very low news uh, for people who don't know. It's the Fourth of July holiday here in in uh, New York as well as the rest of the country, and so you know no one's in front of their TV. The, the stock market is closed, and it was uh, incredibly well planned, as far as I can tell. Incredibly well planned. And then the question we ask, uh, and it's the same one we asked when uh, Bill Gates handed over the reins at Microsoft, is Bezos actually going away? He's going to remain chairman of the board. Well, no, he's not going away. He also has, by the way, you know, 10 percent of the of the stock. So he's the largest shareholder. Uh, the next largest one is Vanguard, which is an investment, which is a fund, um, and they have 6%. The 10% is a good number, um, but, you know, it's not controlling shares. Uh, but he's really put his stamp on the company. It's a gigantic company, and um, it is it works with or without Jeff Bezos. Um, uh, it's incredibly well designed. It has broken a lot of molds for organizations. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of money on the profit and the operating profit end, but it's still very, very, very powerful throughout the world. And, uh, you know, even rich people get tired of uh, being the king sometimes and they, they want to step back a little bit. So I think he'll still be there. He'll still, his influence, not so much as is the stock market, but because of the way he built the company, um, is still going to be pervasive. In a way that, you know, Bill Gates only owned 1% of the market share, uh, of the, I'm sorry, of the shares that were outstanding at the time that he, he stepped down. So, you know, these, these guys are, have great big shadows. They've trained a lot of people. People think that they're very good at what they do. And so the company, in fact, will pursue, proceed as if Bezos was the head. As if Chief Bezos was the head. And you mentioned how... He uh, keeps the profit margins low. He makes a lot of money, I know, from the cloud computing services, so he doesn't have to... You say that, and your previous person also said that, but you know what? It's not true. They don't make a lot of money. They bill money, and they have a reasonable operating profit, but mostly 
people make money from uh, uh, the people who benefit from Amazon are the consumers and people who trade the stock. The actual operating profits are have always been held very low for a variety of reasons. Uh, um, the, the biggest one, say critics, is that, uh, you know, he's crushing the competition and the competition is sometimes the small businesses who have to use his services. Absolutely. I mean, that is that is what he's doing. He's 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 completely controlled retail. And what's happened, one of the reasons that he this is a very good time for the company for him to step down is because of the pandemic, his uh, percentage of business has exploded in the United States and some a lot of other countries. And um, since the company is under such scrutiny and he's the richest guy in the world, it makes sense for him to step away from managing the company. It is less, um, uh, he's, it, it makes the company less of a target because he and the company are absolutely aligned right now. And when he steps away from being the president, it will take away that kind of, uh, uh, you know, knee jerk response of really hating him for his wealth. Again, I come back to the to the question of the political headwinds, because during the pandemic, uh, people were furious, especially small shops here in France, seeing as how come we're shut down and Amazon is raking in uh, the business. Is it tenable to keep this business model? I'm not talking business wise, but politically. Yeah, it's absolutely tenable because the consumers want it. And the consumers didn't step away. Um, the the internet, the digital commerce, does not do any of the businesses any good in terms of the small organizations that actually need to make a living from it, not from stock. Um, they really benefit the consumer. But at what point and do then? At what point do politicians step in and regulate this mismatch? So it's not very. <laughs> this kind of regulation isn't very successful. Francois at the, at doing this. I mean, uh, let's just talk about the United States. I, I'm I'm less familiar with what's going on in France, but in the United States, the rules of um, of uh, domination of being a monopoly have to do with the harm to the consumer. That's how it's all structured. It doesn't talk about the harm to the other individuals. And because of the way that the people who own stock can make money, they can continue to make low profits, trade the stock and then in fact benefit the consumer. So the, the law has to change in the United States in order to uh, fight against this. And in some cases when they've broken up monopolies, uh, let's think about the telephone company, it hasn't worked because the telephone company's utility has been a natural monopoly and it's continued to, um, to, to recombine. Like after they broke it up you know, 20 years ago, slowly but surely it's recombined. And so it is it, the politicians can try and it's just going to be incredibly difficult for them to do anything about it. Um, we look at Google and the strength of Google uh, in terms of search and a lot of other uh, functions that they do for companies. And it's, it's just a very difficult situation from a legal and policy standpoint. Ava, Steve, you say uh, you want to look at from an American perspective here. And there's something that the whole world envies which is this attitude you have in the United States of anybody can grow up to be Rockefeller. And the story of a guy who starts a business in his garage and becomes the world's richest man, of course, captures the imagination. Uh, what's the uh, street cred of Jeff Bezos at this point? I know he's just gone through a divorce. He's in this sort of ego race with uh, these other billionaires to go into space. How, what yeah. do people think of him? I... <laughs> Oh, I think he's a nut. But you know what? He's a very smart nut and he's his eye is not on the ball anymore. And I think it's smart of him not to be running his company. He's busy having affairs, divorcing his wife, you know, shooting himself up into space with his brother. No. Like don't run the company. That's like crazy stuff. So I think from a personal perspective, he's walking away. Um and I, I don't know what people generally think. Uh, about his personality, but... Well, well all I right, let me, put, let me put the question to you this way. When we see, for instance, that Elon Musk, those who love him, they, they give him this guru status. Does he have the guru status? Yes, yes, yes. He definitely has guru status. If you read his 
his annual reports and he talks about what he's dealt with this year and how he thinks about the company. Uh, you know, every day is day one. Um, and how the energy of the company has to continue and so forth. He's gotten a ton of criticism for that. He's also one of the largest employers in the United States. So that means that people continue to work there, both white collar people as well as, you know, a lot of workers in, in the warehouses. Uh, uh, of course, there's been a big deal made of the unionization attempt in Alabama, I think it was, Georgia, Alabama, uh, Alabama. which was lost. Alabama. Alabama. I was right the first time. And, um, you know, the union movement in the U.S. is very small and very weak. And uh, Teamsters or no, um, it's going to be super hard to get Americans uh, who are pretty much not, they're, they're not very steady workers. There's a lot of gig working going on to vote for something that looks like a union. It's, it, it's just it's just tiny. It's 10 percent of the workers in the United States are unionized. By the way, that's almost the same thing as in France. But the French unions have a seat at the table for the boards. They do not in the United States. So that they're very they're very weak uh, in most industries right now. All right. The Amazon model is safe after Jeff Bezos says they've received many thanks for joining us from New York City. Thank you.